Hey everybody and welcome to today's studio vlog. So what you are watching me pour right now is actually stearic acid and it is a natural substance that's derived from palm fruit and it gives creams and lotions a nice fluffy texture so I've always used it in my shea cream. Um, if you don't know or you haven't been here I make a shea butter cream that is uh, it has some really nice oils and butters, but it's not greasy. Um, I'm adding my emulsifying wax to it right now. So it's kind of made a name for itself in that it is um, just really kind of rich and luxurious, but it doesn't have the grease factor. So I just pulled a little bit out. I'm getting the exact measurement here. So you can see I, I keep kind of tearing the scale um, back to make sure I'm getting the correct measurements for this. So once we add the emulsifying wax and the stearic acid, um, we're going to add in some other ingredients. But just in terms of the shea cream itself, a lot of the time I'll make a really large batch of it, but I've actually been making um, several batches of this and I, I feel like I'm really going through a lot more than I normally do this early in the year. So I'm making, it, you know, kind of an extra batch than I more than I typically would to try to catch up. So I'm just adding little tiny bits of this shea butter right now, trying to get the scale exactly where I want it and the measurement correct. Um, I'm not going to go over all of the oils that I add because this is a recipe that took me over a year and a half to develop. So um, I'm gonna keep some of that proprietary, but I'm using an oil right now, a liquid oil in here um, that helps to kind of quickly does, helps it quickly dissolve into the to the skin and then I'm going to add two others um, that will I'm just using the rest of this one right now um, I will tell you this the one is um, avocado oil um, so you know not a quick absorber but uh, I found it to be a really nice component of the cream and so I have three three um, liquid oils all together and then the shea butter are the main components of this um, so what we'll do is take this then and melt it down in a double boiler and then I just let it sit until um, the water has cooled and I'll show you what I'm doing here with the water next. So the water goes into a larger pot because when the oils and the butters have and the waxes have melted down they will be added to the water. So there's two phases when you make a shea cream. You have the oil phase and you have the um, the water phase. So I'm using distilled water. So you want to make sure that you're using a distilled water. Um, anytime I use my pots, they're big stainless steel pots. I spritz them with alcohol, just kind of keep everything sterile. I'm working in my studio. So these pots are only used for the creams and lotions I make. I don't ever mix my cooking pots with um, those that I am using in my studio. These are all specific to the studio. So to the water, I add glycerin. So uh, you use a kosher vegetable glycerin and um, that really helps give the cream or a lotion, depending on what you're making, a nice property. And in order to kind of differentiate between a cream and a lotion, you, you know, mine are pretty thick. I, I want them to be a thick cream. Um, if you want it to be a lotion, you would just have like a higher water phase than you would the, or, you know, a higher water ratio in that component to the oils. So this is what the glycerin looks like when it's going in um, and it'll just kind of disperse all throughout and then it gets heated. So I'm switching you over now while that is heating to getting some lye water prepped and I'm actually doing a couple of these containers because I'm making several batches of soap. I'm going to do a couple of them today and then the others I'll, I'll save. So again I'm using distilled water um, I'm just measuring this. So what I'll do is just take all of my lye containers and these are lye containers. They're never used for anything else, just lye. You can see a little bit of like the dust on there. Or you call it, you know, lint, whatever on the sides. Um, sometimes that hangs around from previous batches um, and then it, you know, just kind of dissolves in. But, um, you know, I'm getting my, I use the lye um, powder and it just, you know, I've continued to use these smaller containers of it rather than the big ones 
that you scoop out. I just am not quite comfortable doing that yet. So what I'm doing, um, I actually deleted a little bit of this footage, but it's also pretty repetitive. Uh, I'm just doing a couple of these. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just repeating that over and over to get a couple of live water batches prepped. So you can see me measure it in. I'm just going to show you what this looks like when I go through the process. You can do it a little at a time. I have it right on the scale, so I'm measuring. You can stop and stir, stop and stir, but since these aren't super large batches and I'm not using that much, um, I'm just pouring it all in at once. And then you can see me stirring the spatula that I use to stir this. You want to stir it really well so you can get the lye to dissolve and it heats up really quickly, so you want to be careful. Um, so I just stir really slowly so that I don't get any splashes. And again, you want your goggles and all of those safety measures in place. Um, I keep all of my lye in a separate cabinet. Um, my lye water is stored on the back of a counter. Again, this is all in my studio and no one really has access to this. There aren't any kids, other people, pets, nobody's here. It's just me. I work in here alone. I do have someone helping me. Um, she knows where the lye water is. She doesn't go anywhere near it. She doesn't work with it. It's just for me. So this will actually cool down overnight and get to a really nice cool temperature so that I can use it um, for my soaps. Now I'm going to use some of it today because I have to I have to make a couple of batches. So this is just showing you um, that I'm repeating the process. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through this. So once I have all of my lye prepped and lye water prepped and ready to go, um, what we're going to do is work on getting the hard oils and um, just the, you know, the oils ready for the soap batches. So we're going to do a couple of those. I'll show you doing two of them together. Um, we'll get our, you know, our palm and our coconut and everything in there. I'll add in the castor oil um, and then we'll add the olive oil as we make the batches. So another pot, I have a lot of these big stainless steel pots. So I'm just tearing out my scale. I'm adding in my coconut oil. And what I do when I am, um, this is what's called master batching. So what you'll do is you can, um, you can do it several different ways. Now I'm making kind of some smaller batches um, for the standards I usually go by because a lot of the times I'll, I'll do like three times the amount of soap that I'm making with these individual batches. I'm just getting these measurements right. So I'll use a couple of these pots and then I'll measure out all of the coconut oil in each pot. Then I'll measure out the palm oil and the other oils and we set them aside until we're ready to use them. Okay, so now that I've set all of the um, soap prep oils aside, we are back to making that cream. So I melted down and let cool my oils and waxes and then my water and glycerin solution is at an appropriate temperature. I need it to be under 140 so that I can then add my preservative to it. So I did that and then I combined the oils in with the water mixture and now we are emulsifying it. I have a really um, very large industrial or commercial strength wand mixer. So we need to keep working through this with the wand mixer at a really high speed to get all of the molecules in that oil phase and in that water phase to um, mesh together and that's when we go from um, having these clear water glycerin solutions and oils into this really nice white cream. I'm stopping here to add in vitamin E. I use quite a bit of vitamin E um, in my creams because I want them to be just as gentle and nice on the skin as possible. So this is like, this is the next day. So this lye water has been sitting overnight in a safe place. Of course, if you're going to prep lye water, make sure 
you have a separate location, not just your kitchen. It's got to be away from everyone and everything. I have a separate studio. I have a place where I keep it. Nobody comes in here but me. So um, just a little safety tip that's super important. Okay, so right now we're doing the lavender soap and in just a moment we'll do the comfort. <laughs> Now watch as I'm mixing this, you can see how the it's all coming together. The lye water starts to blend really nicely with the oils, the melted oils. And what happens is we get it to a trace. So it gets to be one uniform creamy color that um, will have kind of a slight faint line when I drag the wand mixer across. And that's when I know it's about a trace. Now it's not quite there yet. I'm actually adding in my lavender essential oil right now because I want to, I don't want to blend it too much. Um, so I'm waiting till it's a really light trace. I add the essential oil. Um, I'll blend it a little bit more and then we'll add the color from there. So lavender is one of um, the soaps that I use for my gift sets on Etsy. They're also on my website. You can customize a gift set. You can put your personal message on there. You can choose a quote or use a quote that I have that goes with it. I have them for every occasion on Etsy. You can do a comfort box, a calm box. I have a best day box, like a celebratory one. And I have a balancing act box that is also pretty popular. But, you know, everyone loves lavender soap, so it's just something that has to, it's one of my keep it in stock soaps. And I generally do this one in a big batch, but I've just decided this year in 2023, I'm just going back to like some smaller batches at a time and doing it that way for right now. Because I'm not ordering as big a bulk as I used to. Okay, so let's get this poured. Whoops, a little bit of color right here. This is just the right color. Kind of wish I'd gone a little lighter to begin with. However, this is just fine. And we scrape our pan. So basically over this video, what I've made is a few gallons of cream. I didn't do too much this time because I've just made, I made a five gallon set and then um, I did another couple of gallons and I'm really making a lot more cream. It seems like this time of year than I usually do. So I must really be going through it. I need to look at my stats. Okay. So I was thinking my next video, I might do a, like a day in the life of, um, well, I want to do this actually using this clip. I might end up turning this into like a day in the life of a soap maker since, you know, I make soap, but I also have a, a full-time job. So I thought I would show you like when I'm focused on doing soaps, what are the things that I'm doing? Um, but I also wanted to do a day in the life of a sales consultant for education to show you kind of, you know, what my day looks like um, when I do that as well. So we are, um, got a couple of those videos coming up. I just have to kind of, you know, put put the clips together. It's a little more involved to film, but um, it's something that I've wanted to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and film that. So let me clean this, move this off to the side, and we're gonna be back in just a second to make another soap. Okay, so now we're doing comfort. Um, this one is just a vanilla sugar. It's a very simple soap to make. So I'm soaping it a little bit warm rather than waiting 
um, because I know that it comes together really quickly and I just get it in the mold. I don't have to color it or do anything. All I have to do is add the vanilla and the vanilla um, itself takes care of turning it kind of a darker shade. So I'll show you what it looks like. This is what the comfort soap looks like. And that brown is not a color I put in there. It's just from the vanilla coloring it. Um, but I need to get a batch of this made because these gift boxes sell um, regularly and I want to make sure I have enough in stock. And I just made the balancing act and I'm already, you know, that's already going down. Best day will be next, but um, I just realized I need more best day boxes. So I'm completely out of best day soap boxes and wild soap boxes and I just had my um, men's soap, two of my men's soaps replenished, plus the new power. I'm just stirring this because we've got some um, goat milk powder in here that I just need to stir a little bit more. Okay, so that'll just, um, it just dissolves. I use the goat milk powder rather than plain goat milk because the, the regular, actually this is still pretty hot. So I'm gonna wait, we're gonna come back and do this in a minute and I'm gonna do my gift box first. I'm gonna wait till these this oil cools just a little bit more. Okay, I wanted to show you um, what one of the comfort boxes looks like and what one of the calm boxes look like. looks like. Um, I have some different, I have three different variations of these. I don't sell this one a lot but I think it's a good one. Um, it has a large calm candle. Uh, it has a quote that says, um, it's all about finding the calm and the chaos, Donna Karen. There's a lavender lip balm in there, um, cozy socks, which I think are just kind of a fun addition. And then the calm soap, the one we're making today. Um, and then this one's going to have, what you get is a personalized message on the inside. And I'm not gonna seal this up yet because I need to add just some branding cards and um, like a sample of a soap or something. Um, and then this one, this is an Easter one that's been ordered already. So I have like a little bunny with a heart on its butt or on the tail. Somebody misses you, happy Easter. That goes on the top of the box. So I'll put that on there now. I'm just kind of prepping these for tomorrow and then I'll put the personalized message in there. Um, I'll put one of my brand stickers on there. Um, I'll add like a branding card that gives information about me and the business. And then I also put in my card that has my podcast on it, the wellness stories, but it also gives information um, just wherever I can be found online. And then this um, takes you right to the podcast. So that's the calm. So I'm going to set that here, get it ready for tomorrow. And then the comfort box, this is just um, like one of the variations. So I have, um, in addition to the socks, I have things like washcloths that are like natural fiber that are really nice and they're actually pretty big. Um, so there's like three different variations of this you can do, but generally they'll have like a small uh, vanilla sugar calm cream, the comfort soap, like the one we're making today. Um, this is the new version of the bath bomb, which I really like. It's just a comfort zone. And then it's got like a little um, chamomile on top and it's vanilla. And you get a vanilla lip balm. Um, again, you can add to these, you can add face cream, face um, clay powder. There are other things that can go in it as well. And then I have these little two ounce candles. They're vanilla candles and I just have them as comfort candles. Same thing, you can um, put your own personalized message there. And then I have quotes that go with almost all of, well, with all of my boxes. Um, again, um, as you know, I was a literature teacher for a long time, so I love quotes, I love literature, so I've kind of incorporated that into these. All right, so I just wanted to show you those. Now um, my comfort soap oils should be ready to go and we can make that soap. All right, so let's try this comfort soap again. Now that we've had some time to cool, I'm having some trouble with my Mac desktop that I keep in my, that's my computer in my studio. And it should not be having any issues. It's basically a new computer. I only use it down here. It doesn't have like a, a whole bunch of apps or anything. I keep it cleared off and it's running so slow that it's driving me crazy. So I've got to figure out what's going on with that. All right, so we are going to do our lye water in here. As always, my goat milk's still a little clumpy, but that's okay. The wand mixer will take care of that. So I'm getting this um, emulsified, just like I did with the lavender soap. You can watch 
as the lye water and the oils come together and form that nice creamy color. And again, this is a really simple soap. I don't have to add any color to it. The vanilla takes care of that. So I'm just going to add in my vanilla um, fragrance and it's just a nice easy one. I, I like when I have these simple soaps. I'm usually happy when I get to make one that's just one color, but I don't even have to add color to this, which is so nice. So there goes the, the vanilla fragrance. Um, I have to say like one of my favorite soaps, of course, to make is the Sensitive Soul. It doesn't have any fragrance. It doesn't have any color. It has extra goat milk. Um, half the time I have, you know, some loyal customers that use that soap all the time. That's actually the soap that I use. So I go through quite a bit of it. I use it for my face and, and all over my body. It's a wonderful creamy soap for sensitive skin and I am extremely sensitive. Um, so that soap has worked really well for me. And all of these soaps have, you know, the same base, but then you have the fragrance added to it and the color. So we're getting this ready to go. Um, I'm just going to take this to the end of the video and you can watch me pour it. And we are going to end from there um, for today's video. But I wanted to, you know, just kind of give you an idea of what a typical day might look like in the studio. Um, this is actually a Sunday that I'm doing this because I'm working full time now in my sales job. So as I mentioned before, I'll likely do a day in the life. Um, I'm trying to wait until March because in about a week and a half, I'm going to be traveling to California. So I thought that might be more interesting for you to see what it's like as um, a working mom who has to travel. So while I'm doing these California trips, I'll take you along in April. I'll be in Palm Springs. I'll take you along there as well. I have my own little Airbnb, which is super so cute and kind of really typical of Palm Springs. So I'll show you what that's overnight. like. Um, and I'll probably give you some travel tips too around. if you're a working mom it, um, to sure. see some of the things that I've done to simplify my life while traveling and, you know, just kind of put in place ahead of time. And I've learned some of them from other YouTubers and I'll, I'll mention that, you know, working moms here, right, but, oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm half nervous, half excited to nice take on this next part of my sugar. journey, but I'm going to bring you along. And I think too. making it fun oh, for me is going cream. to be filming a lot of it. 2023 is a different year for um, sure. So let's finish up this comfort soap, but we're just getting this all into the mold and I don't need to put anything on it. No iridescent, um, glitter. So no, no sparkle, nothing like that. Online. We're just um, again, getting it in here and finishing up. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos. My channel has finally anyway. just started to grow. Um, I was really discouraged at the end day. of 2022, summer, even just in December, like but I've noticed so much growth even since then. It's it's really and amazing. I, um, I feel like a lot of the time, right when you're ready to give something up, you turn a corner. And I really was thinking of just giving up this channel altogether and having a lot of discouragement around my business in general. General. And, you know, knowing that I was about to start a new career, um, there was a lot of nerves Sounds around like that, too. Um, but I've kept the YouTube right, channel going. So gonna, um, it I'm really just kind of started to grow right from that away, point, kind of like this here? sign to, you know, to keep going. So right when you're feeling that level of frustration, if you just push a little bit further, um, good things can happen. So just a lesson for all of us, right? Again, thanks so much for watching and for being here, and I hope you subscribe.